Hi folks, welcome to week two, where we are looking at um, point of view and a poem called 13 Ways of Looking at a Blackbird by Wallace Stevens. Um, so today, like I said, we are focusing on um, analyzing point of view and perspective in a poem and how that helps to influence the development of the meaning or the theme of the poem. Um, so this is an example of a poem where we have 13 different um, perspectives, as it kind of says in the title, 13 ways of looking at a blackbird. Um, and my biggest recommendation for you as you read this poem is that you do not try to read through it once and just identify the meaning of the poem. Um, you need to go through stanza by stanza, try to understand each stanza, and then from there, think about how that builds to a meaning. Um, so that's what we're going to do together as we look at the poem in this video. Um, so like I said, we're going to focus on point of view in this lesson. We're also going to see a lot of examples of imagery. I think that's just going to happen in every poem. It's the nature of poetry. And then we're also going to think about symbolism, how the things that are in each stanza might symbolize a, a smaller meaning that can lead to a larger theme that comes from the poem. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the poem. So um, you can see you have your directions here in Actively Learn for how you're going to interact with this week's text. As you read the poem, please describe what you see happening in each stanza. So I literally want you to read the stanza, pause, um, put in a, like a little note, like a comment, like you're annotating, this is what I think is happening in this poem. Like actually describe it. You don't even have to like get to meaning or bigger um, deep analyses. Like I just want you to make sure that you can see in your mind what's happening in each stanza. Um, and then there's two questions to answer below, just like last week. So like I said, we're focusing on the use of the effects of point of view um, and think about how that changes in each stanza. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, read a couple of the stanzas with you, and then I'll go over what I see in those stanzas as well. So just starting, um, like I already mentioned, the title of this poem is 13 Ways of Looking at a Blackbird. It's by someone named Wallace Stevens. Um, this is probably the most old man, old white man canonical poem that we're going to read. Um, but I actually really love this poem because I think that it's just so full of opportunities to analyze and meaning. Like I could read each of these stanzas over and over again and keep like thinking further and further. I just think it takes your mind on like this um, like spiral of ideas that you can get out of like so few words. And so I really enjoy that. And I hope that you guys do too. Um, so we know from the, the, title that we're going to be looking at a blackbird. That's going to be the subject of this poem. Um, and we're going to look at it 13 different ways. So if you scroll ahead, you can see, uh, although these are Roman numerals, and hopefully you know a little bit about Roman numerals, um, that there are 13 stanzas. So the X is the 10 and then the three I's. So we've got 13 stanzas. Each stanza is going to be a different way of seeing or analyzing or thinking about the subject, which is the blackbird. Um, like I also said, my strategy for reading this poem is not going to be to just read through and then think, okay, what does this poem mean? Um, I'm actually going to read a stanza. And if I had this text on paper, which I do, um, I would literally draw like some of the things that I see. And I'll show you some of my drawings in a minute. Um, but if not, then you can also just type it out, describe what is going on in this stanza? What's the point of view in this stanza that I'm reading? So here we go. Um, the first one, stanza one, says, among 20 snowy mountains, the only moving thing was the eye of the blackbird. Um, so what do I see here? I think that if I can see 20 snowy mountains, that means that I must be pretty far back, right? Like if I can see the full mountain range, I'm not really up close, I'm zoomed out. So we're thinking about perspective and point of view, right? But then I can see the little eye of the blackbird and that's the only thing that's moving. So I'm thinking about snow and stillness and a mountain range and then just like this eye of a bird and you know birds have like beady little eyes just darting around, right? What do they see? So I'm gonna leave myself um, some notes here to describe what I'm seeing. So this would be like a zoomed out perspective. 
um, of a mountain range. And then the only moving thing, so we do have this idea of stillness, was the eye of the blackbird. But then this one is really zoomed in, right? And this, this is where we have imagery of movement. So we have this contrast already of movement, stillness, really far out, really zoomed in. Um, we can kind of see already just within one stanza how the author is playing around with perspective and point of view. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Like, there's a bird in nature, in the mountains, in the snow. I don't think that I can, like, make some big, larger meaning out of just this one little stanza. But let's keep going and see what happens. So in stanza two, it says... I was of three minds like a tree in which there are three blackbirds. Okay, um, now we have the subject, we have a person, right, that is not a bird. So we're introducing maybe like a new character or a new subject um, who might have their own point of view, right? Um, and they're saying that they're of three minds, like a tree in which there are three blackbirds. Now, when I was trying to imagine what this looked like in my mind, I decided that I wanted to draw it. So I'm going to put my drawing up here. Um, this is my, my tree with three branches and three birds in each. As you can see, once I drew that, I started thinking, what might this mean? So... I have heard the expression before when somebody says like, I'm of two minds about this. What they mean is that they have like two different ways of thinking about it or two different ideas. So I'm wondering at this point, if the three minds are like three different branches or three different choices and the three different birds represent different choices that this person might, this new subject might have. So I'm thinking that this might be a symbol, the tree, the branches, the birds themselves. Um, the birds are symbolic of different choices a person might need to make. All right, cool. Now, I don't know that that's like the be all end all meaning, but Let's roll with it, right? Now, you're going to keep going and do this to every single stanza as you move through. Um, if you want to draw it out, if you want to describe it, like do whatever you need to do to kind of work through each of the stanzas. Um, they start to get a little longer at certain points, sometimes a little trickier. Um, and if you have any questions or you want to discuss the, the stanzas and you're not able to come to live class today, then please jump on my office hours and we can talk about it there as well. Um, the two questions that you're answering um, at the end, how did the changing point of view in each stanza affect your reading of the poem? You're telling me like what you think about this. I don't really think there's like a wrong answer to this question. And then the second one, based on the different points of view you experience in the poem, what could be the overall meaning or theme of the poem? Um, I think there's a lot of answers to this because each stanza can represent its own smaller meaning. And then you can take that and kind of see patterns, um, make connections throughout the rest of the poem, or maybe you see multiple meanings. Like I think there's a lot of options, but you have to say what you think the meaning is. Like what's the message? Why did the author choose to analyze something as simple as a blackbird from so many different perspectives or put them as a subject in so many different thoughts and ideas. Um, so I, I really think this is like an opportunity to have fun thinking about what this poem might mean. Um, once you're done with that, then if you go back to the slides, you can see the description of your homework for this week. Um, you are going to be writing your own nature poem so you can pick any subject that you want um that's as long as it's not a human so anything from nature 
and you're writing your own like five different ways of looking at that thing. So five different ways of looking at a tiger or a lizard or your cat or whatever else um, you think might be an interesting subject. Um, I really push you to use imagery um, and symbolism. So not only do you need to have each stanza is going to be a different way of looking at that thing within those stanzas, make sure that you're describing really well, you're using imagery um, to really bring those images to life for the reader. And then um, the biggest thing you can do, like the real challenge of making a good poem, I think, is to figure out how you can make that nature image a symbol of something. And then that helps to start to create larger meaning in your own poems. So rather than just like descriptive ramblings, if you're thinking about maintaining like a symbolic structure, you're starting to create meaning in the poem. So if the tiger represents like fierceness or strength or speed, or if um, a butterfly represents like transformation, so be thinking about how you might be able to do that. Um, the poem analysis is due on Tuesday night as usual, and then this nature poem that you're creating is due on Thursday. Um, have fun!